Hey guys, my name is Tony Maritato. I'm a licensed physical therapist here in Middletown, Ohio, and I have the good fortune of working with a lot of individuals who are avid pickleball players. So one of the most frustrating things for a pickleball athlete is to deal with an osteoarthritis flare-up. So in this video, I want to talk about what osteoarthritis is exactly, how to manage osteoarthritis pain, and when you should stop playing pickleball because of osteoarthritis, or when you can safely push through the pain and continue to play the game that you love. So osteoarthritis, plain, plain and simple, is the wear and tear of the joint surfaces most commonly. It can be associated with bone spurs, it can be associated with cartilage damage. Um, typically it is increasing pain with movement or with physical activity. But osteoarthritis is one of those conditions that while it is affected by mechanical movement, it requires mechanical movement. It requires loading and exercise to manage the condition. We want to be smart about what we do, but at the same time, we don't want to stop doing any of the things that we love. So in my clinic, the most common situation is somebody has osteoarthritis in the hip, the knee, the ankle, occasionally osteoarthritis in the shoulder. And what they find is that if they do too much on the pickleball court, they're gonna flare up, they're gonna get increased swelling, increased pain, and they won't be able to play or practice for the next couple days. But if they do too little or they don't do anything at all, obviously they're not gonna get better, they're not gonna play as well, and they're gonna get frustrated. So what we wanna do is we wanna find the sweet spot in the middle. When I'm working with somebody, maybe somebody who's had a rotator cuff repair surgery, a total shoulder replacement surgery, or a knee replacement surgery, I always want to find that middle ground where they're doing more than they were doing before. They're finding their tolerance so that they can push themselves, they can work out hard, they can improve their strength, their coordination, their agility, their balance but they don't do so much that they're more swollen or experiencing more pain that night or the next day. If they can go out and they can play for 30 minutes, either in practice or in a game, and they feel fine the next day, awesome. We'll push their tolerance up to 45 minutes. But if they find that they're playing 60 minutes and now the next day they're more sore, more swollen, more painful, and they can't play as well for the next two or three days until they recover, that went beyond what their body can handle. So we're going to scale back to that 45 or 50 minute zone until they've been doing it for four weeks, six weeks, even two months. And then we might test that 60 minute time frame again. So osteoarthritis is not the kind of thing that we want to avoid exercise. We, we want to stay active. We want to keep moving. Um, clinical research shows that the best thing to treat arthritis is continued exercise and movement but there isn't any benefit to pushing yourself so hard that you experience a functional decline because you're in so much pain and so sore the following day. So my advice to anyone that I'm working with is, let's find your tolerance, let's find the sweet spot on the days that we're not playing pickleball, let's work on the mechanics, let's work on form and technique, let's build strength and increase your capacity so that when you are practicing, when you are playing in a match, you're better able to handle the loading, handle the impact on the court, and you can recover quicker because a quicker recovery means you can play more. Guys, if you have questions about anything related to pickleball or rehab or recovery or physical therapy, just let me know down in the comments and I'll catch you on the next video.